It's a beautiful snowy day here in Sudbury, Ontario. Let's check out the new Ford Maverick. Let's get you up to speed on the 2022 Ford Mavericks all-wheel drive system, and by the end of this video, you'll know how it works, how it was developed, and some of its best features, tricks, and functions. We'll be hearing from Scott Wilson, a calibration engineer with Ford from Richmond Hill, Ontario, and he's one of many folks who worked on the 2022 Maverick, and specifically, this compact truck's all-wheel drive system. My non-hybrid tester ran the 2.0-liter turbo four-cylinder engine and all-wheel drive powertrain configuration. The engine sits up front, and the all-wheel drive system attached to it consists of two key components, a disconnecting power transfer unit, or PTU, at the front of the vehicle, and an electromechanical torque transferring rear drive unit, or RDU, at the back. Wilson says the combination of these two hardware components allows the system to continuously vary the amount of torque being sent to the rear axle. In situations where no torque is required, the system physically disconnects, meaning the drive shaft and gear sets that are attached to it stop spinning. This results in less friction in the drive line, which saves fuel. So in a nutshell, when full traction isn't required, this all-wheel drive system can be physically decoupled, allowing it to run in a high-efficiency sleep mode until additional grip is required. So while you're cruising down the highway on a sunny Sunday afternoon and traction is abundant, the all-wheel drive is decoupled, its gears and shafts stop spinning, and you're running in a fuel-saving front-wheel drive setup. When slippery surfaces see traction running low, or when the Maverick's all-wheel drive computer brain predicts that they might be about to, the PTU is reconnected. It can switch from fully disconnected to fully operational in a few hundred milliseconds, re-engaging all-wheel drive traction in roughly the time it takes a human being to blink. Further rearwards, the rear drive unit, or RDU, which sits between the rear wheels, uses an electromechanically controlled clutch pack to enable immediate torque transfer. Applying power to the RDU's motor changes the clamping force on the clutches inside. This gives the system the ability to vary torque split between the axles as quickly as a computer can alter the flow of current through an electric motor, which is to say, immediately. The electric motor, which drives the clutch packs inside of the RDU, works at the direction of a dedicated module that reads a variety of sensor inputs to make better decisions. Wilson says the RDU's control module reads inputs from vehicle sensors roughly every 20 milliseconds, and that it considers things like outside temperature, steering angle, wiper activation, accelerator pedal position, the yaw sensor data, and lateral acceleration sensor data, as well as many more, to help make the best decisions possible. And in specific situations, this all-wheel drive system is able to transfer 100% of the engine's power to the rear axle. The goal is to give the Maverick's all-wheel drive system a picture of the current physical forces acting on the vehicle accurate down to the millisecond. This helps paint the most accurate picture of the current traction situation, which allows the all-wheel drive system to respond in the most ideal way for the given conditions and driver demands. The Maverick's all-wheel drive and braking systems work hand-in-hand, -hand, and this is Wilson's area of expertise. Drivers will notice one of the results of this collaboration while they're trying to steer sharply at low speed in deep snow, for instance a snow-filled parking lot. In this setting, the Maverick can apply braking force to the inside rear wheel, almost like an automatic parking brake slide, but much more precise and seamless. Wilson says that braking the inside rear wheel in this situation does three distinct things. First, it turns that wheel into an anchor point for the rest of the vehicle to turn on. Second, it transfers torque to the outside rear wheel, helping the truck to rotate. And finally, by slowing the inside rear wheel, it speeds up the outside rear wheel, further increasing rotation. The result from the driver's seat is a smaller turning circle, less plowing, and a more direct response to your commands even in a foot of snow. Notably, the all-wheel drive control system understands situations where the vehicle is most likely to need additional traction before a wheel slips. By detecting those situations, the system can be pre-engaged, sending power to the rear wheels and helping provide the ideal response. That's less slip and more grip in more situations, and from the driver's seat, a more consistent feeling of response and control. 
At a button press, drivers can engage the slippery drive mode for the most ideal response in challenging winter conditions, and doing so calls up a set of calibrations that ensure the Maverick maximizes safety and driver confidence by working the brakes, engine, and all-wheel drive system to limit slippage and help guide the vehicle as precisely as possible to where the driver is steering. It's all about delivering exactly what the driver is looking for, point and shoot traction in all situations with no driver bandwidth required. All right, let's take a look at the tires. So these are Falcon Wild Peaks. This is an all-terrain tire. You can see the snowflake icon right there. And that means that this is a winter capable all-terrain tire because for a lot of Canadians driving trucks, uh, they're using one tire all year round. And so by having an all-terrain tire like this with a winter rating or winter capability, you've got something that might make the most sense for you if you're just planning on running one tire all year. Still, I think, although a lot of Canadians will use a single tire like these winter-rated all-terrains all year round, if you live in a northern locale like me, northern Ontario, if you're frequently seeing severe winter weather, you're frequently driving in heavy snow, uh, like I'm showing you in this video, you can still absolutely benefit from switching to a full-out dedicated winter tire. Thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. Hit that like button down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.